Okay, okay. So, good evening everybody, or good afternoon still. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, this was, uh, as I said, this is a subject that was well, chosen by many of you. Um, so, of course, if there's another subject that you prefer, let me know. And perhaps that's something that uh, has sort of my interest already. And then I like diving into new uh, subjects and then just finding out and I sort of give an overview presentation uh, because I like doing that. Anyway, so tonight is going to be about, um, as I said, yeah, here we go, the detection of exoplanets. And uh, these, uh, these nice posters uh, I haven't made. These are, of course, ridiculous tourist posters, but they are official NASA posters and, uh, about exoplanets and visiting them and having fun as a tourist. But that's, of course, as a joke. But there is some reality in there. Uh, but we'll look at that uh, later on. So. Um, in astronomy, the subject of uh, exoplanets uh, basically uh, started about one and a half months after I graduated. So uh, during my uh, uh, university years, um, well, of course, we knew there were, well, we sort of, well, we didn't officially know, but we sort of guessed that other stars would have planets too, because, well, the, the, if you look at the history of science, we basically find that every time we find that the uh, humans, the Earth, the Sun is nothing special, and and basically just extrapolate that, and you make a fir good first guess. So um, other stars will have planets. Let's look at the, how that looks. But basically, to find them, of course, we need the scientific proof of that. And the first um, first star, a uh, sorry, first star that showed a uh, well, uh, a planet, and the star was solar type. Uh, that was in '95. So a couple of weeks after I graduated, I graduated in the, the end of August of 95, and then they found this. And, and a couple of years ago, they got the Nobel Prize for that. Um, in fact, there were indications that there were planets around stars before that, but very vague. This was a very clear uh, 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 discovery. So, um, well, they got the Nobel Prize for that. And in, mean, in the meantime, we found, as you can see, more than uh, more than 5,000, 5,500 planets already, so really a lot, okay? So um, it's completely uh, deserved the Nobel Prize. It's, it's something that we expected, and now we can actually, actually well, see them around other stars, and that, that's really fascinating. And of course, uh, with those numbers, um, we can think about something more. Um, the name, uh, 51 Pegasi B, basically means it's a star uh, in, the, in the constellation of Pegasus, the flying horse. And then star number 51, so very boring name. Uh, but if you have 51 children, you start to name <laughs> them by number, I guess. But um, the B stands for the first planet that, uh, around that, that star. So basically, uh, A would be the star itself. And then B is the first planet, C the second one, and etc. Then we have, well, you can have 20, well, 25 planets, and then we're out of letters, but whatever. Um, and nowadays, we can find all kinds of uh, uh, stuff about those planets. And um, well, some of those uh, uh, variables, how we, how we find them, is what I'm going to explain tonight. Um, so uh, if you see the news about exoplanets, sometimes the, the headlines are quite spectacular. So um, if you see something like this, I've translated some of the, the Dutch uh, titles, that it sounds well, so spectacular that it can't be true, right? So, so we're going to investigate that. Uh, in, the, in the second half, we'll come back to these uh, news uh, messages and, and see if they are true. Uh, yes, they are. And um, uh, let's, let's, let's see how it works, because this looks sensational, but of course, there's proper science behind this, all right? And so these are just three articles about some of those stars. And this is real science. It's, it's actually true and, and stuff like that, but, and, and not quite easy to read, of course, but that's usually with all the scientific articles. So um, uh, first things first, we need uh, a reality check, all right? So a reality check about uh, planets. What? What? Uh, sure? Yeah. Uh, yeah? All right. <laughs> <laughs> what about the rocks here? Right? Just a reality check about our solar system. So just about planets, because well, we're talking about exoplanets. So first we have to find out what are the numbers here? Well, how big is a planet? How big and how heavy? And what are the distances in our solar system? So we need something to compare with. So you can see the numbers here. Uh, so uh, well, these four planets and Earth, a couple of thousand kilometers in radius. Uh, Jupiter-Saturn, roughly 10 times as big. 
Uranus and Neptune in between, and the masses, well, well, ridiculously large numbers, but also the same, uh, smaller, bigger, in between. And then here we have distances, and uh, while well, the distances are ridiculously uh, large in the solar system, millions and millions of kilometers, so that's not a useful unit, so what we do, well, that's the same as in chemistry or whatever, we introduce another uh, a unit, and that's the, the astronomical unit, AU, and that's of course the distance from, well, the average distance from the Earth to the Sun. So that's that's why there's a one here, that's the Earth. So basically Mercury is at 0 0.4, Venus 0.7, etc., 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 Neptune at 30. So they are more, well, well, nicer numbers to work with, okay? So, so these are just some scales for you to, to realize in our solar system. And um, they are roughly three types of, of planets. Yeah. Hi. Hey, yeah, sure. Go. Oh. Thank you. That's fine. Um, so uh, we have the four inner planets, and they are the rocky planets, uh, like Earth. And um, we have a, 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 well, planets that have an iron nickel core with a rocky mantle around it. And then the gas giants, they consist mostly of uh, hydrogen and helium. And we have ice giants, and that sounds, I mean, it sounds terrific if you think of Norse mythology, ice giants, but they are basically planets. But um, And they consist of stuff like uh, ammonia and, and uh, methane also. And those are stuff that, that in space you find as ices, whereas hydrogen and helium you find in space, you usually find them as gases. So that's why we call Jupiter and Saturn gas giants and the other two ice giants, all right? Um, so you get an idea of what type of planets we know. So these are the eight planets of uh, our solar system. And of course, you've seen a picture like this before. I'm, I'm pretty sure if you've well, been alive, basically, <laughs> then you must have seen a picture like this. So uh, of course, we know the planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and the moon, Mars, the, the four Galilean moons of Jupiter, the big one, and this is Saturn, of course, with a terrific ring system, and Titan, the biggest moon in the solar system, Uranus, Neptune, and some small stuff, whatever. <laughs> Pluto and stuff like that. Um, so, to get the idea of the sizes, right, these are the planets. Uh, I forgot one thing. Oh, yeah, the, the sun. <laughs> the sun is much, much bigger, right? Um, uh, roughly, the sun is 10 times as big as Jupiter, so in, in diameter, and Jupiter is roughly 10 times as big as the Earth. So, basically, that means the, Earth, the sun is in the, in the order of 100 times bigger than the Earth in diameter. That basically means cube, the, the Earth fits a million times in, in the Sun, so that's ridiculously large. And the Sun is just an average to small star, right? So the, the, the numbers here are ridiculous and sizes in, impossible to imagine, but we can, we can deal with that with mathematics. Okay, so, um, oh, by the way, you are there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you think you're important, <laughs> look at this picture, right? <laughs> Nobody is important here. Uh, so, so just to get an idea of, of well, the reality check we all need sometimes. Um, 